So you want to be a player, but your wheels ain't fly. You got to hit us up. Hey everyone, it's Travis here from Apiro Design, and today we're going to go through the entire process of cutting out, uh, powder coating, sublimating, and finishing a Ultimaker 2 faceplate. The plan is to be able to do, do these faceplates for all the different kinds of printers, but I'm um, starting with Ultimaker 2 because that's the printer I have and it's perfect for a faceplate. So uh, let's go ahead and start the process. All right, so the process is going to start with uh, me importing a modified um, Ultimaker 2 face uh, into, basically it's, this is the cutout file that uh, Ultimaker uses to cut out the frame for the Ultimaker 2. And uh, they have this, these files up on GitHub so you can actually download them. And I modified the file a little bit so basically when the, the faceplate is done, that you can just take the four screws out of um, the, the main frame on the Ultimaker and um, put the faceplate on and then just put the screws right back in. So I basically modified it to where the tabs aren't on the side um, and made it to where it's easy to, to laser cut. Let's go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna be cutting this out of 24 gauge steel. I'm using 24 gauge steel because I want to uh, be able to put the faceplate on the Ultimaker without it being too thick um, and causing a problem with like the button and the SD card and stuff like that. So um, the 24 gauge steel is, is pretty sturdy steel. And make sure nothing's touching and we're good. Okay. So we're gonna head over here. This is going to show where the, the actual faceplate is going to cut out. Okay, hit the little box button on the remote. So that little square that I just sectioned off, that's where it's going to cut out. And that makes sure that I'm not off the metal or anything like that. So let's go ahead and turn the shutter. And then we'll just hit start. The oxygen um, is already on over here. so. Uh, we use, I think, about seven pounds of oxygen to cut this steel. this piece out of the middle to cut something else out and there's our faceplate now we just have to get it powder coated and uh, sublimated we'll be good to go all right so now we got over in the powder coating area we're gonna wash this off with a special do you even know what's in this uh, it's I like know. it's a uh, specialty soap uh, it keeps it from rusting well, yeah, it makes the does it make the powder stick better? Yeah, yeah. it's uh, what it does is it has, makes it to where the powder can go off easier. Yeah, uh, make sure make sure there's nothing on the metal because if there's, uh, it'll like either make potholes or it'll uh, have stuff on the, in the powder. Basically, a bad surface in yeah, general. Exactly. Yeah. So this is the first step to powder coating. Pretty pretty simple. Just good rinse off. Hang it up there. All right. Go on to the next step. <laughs> um, I stick it in the oven for about 20 minutes. Mm. And uh, usually it has to be at 350 for it to cure, but you can stick it in at 400 at like five minutes and it'll, it'll cure halfway and then you put the clear coat on it and the clear and the white cure together. So it just depends on what uh, whatever I have time to do. Usually I prefer to do it 20 minutes so in this step, we're just putting on the weight. Just put on the weight, yeah.
out the tube. And so when it shoots out, it, uh, it shoots out, it's electrically charged, and so that way it will stick to the metal and it goes to the other and spins. And so if you touch the metal and you're spraying it, you become the ground and you get shocked. Stage. And as you can see, I'm doing a special custom print uh, faceplate for the 3D printing here. Let's go ahead and change the size on this. I believe it's 13, so I'm going to make it 14, give it a little room. Shrink it down, yeah, it's got a little room on the side. All of our settings are good. It prints in reverse. Um, because we're going to lay the, the face the blank faceplate down on top of that and then uh, it'll come out the right way. So now we'll just wait for it to print. This is a special sublimation paper. We're just going to take the, the blank faceplate. It's all powder coated and ready to go. I'm just going to face it down on here and line it up. Get a little bit of a stroke um, added in Photoshop just to make sure that we don't have any white edges or anything like that. So, in something like this, I usually tape down to. set at 400 degrees, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Make sure we're still lined up good. And then this is going to press for, we do 90 seconds usually. Um, I might do a little bit longer just because this is a custom cutout. So I want to make sure that if, uh, the image gets all the way pressed onto the metal. So let's go ahead and shut it down. See it's set for 90 seconds, so we will go ahead and wait for that to go. Alright, and here we got this loud, insane beeping. Uh, sometimes I feel like I'm making french fries out here when I'm pressing like 100 or 200 signs. But pretty much I, I let it go past 90 seconds a little bit, so I'm um, gonna pull it out and it should be good to go. Paper off. <laughs> get it, get it. It's my other hand. Okay. And there we have our custom 3D printing nerd uh, Multimaker faceplate. Turned out pretty awesome. Now I'm going to show you how easy these faceplates are to uh, take off and on. So basically, you're just going to take your Allen key take these four screws out. The only four screws that are on the front of the Ultimaker 2. There's a faceplate that I made for myself. You may see I've seen that if you follow me on uh, Twitter or Instagram. And then you just put the new faceplate face on. It's that easy. Installs within, what, a minute? And as you can see, the buttons are still usable button in the wheel, still usable in the SD card, still able to be gotten out. That's it. Alright, last, we don't really have to have a faceplate to do something awesome to it, right? 
get a pimped out ride. Yeah. Pretty awesome, right there. Damn right.